Welcome to Hansa. This is International Business School. Welcome to our Descriptive Statistics course. And today we are going to learn the time series. And we will first learn how to get the four components of your time series, how to distinguish them. And then we are going to learn how to calculate your seasonal index. There are many steps. And then we will learn how to de-seasonalize your data and to make a reasonable prediction of your data. First, we need to distinguish four components of time series. Let's suppose we are now selling winter clothes, which are very sensitive to the seasons. We record the sales from 2001 to 2010. And then we can formulate our regression line based on the sales. So we call this is the trend line. And this is also called secular trend which is the first component of time series. And we know that our economy also experiences a cyclical trend. So we call this a cyclical variation. For example, sometimes the economy has got prosperity. Sometimes it has got um, recession or depression. And within each year, our product is sensitive to the seasons. So. Different seasons have different sales amount. Like for the winter clothes, in winter or autumn, the sales increase. While in spring and summer, the sales decrease. So we call this is seasonal variation. But sometimes our sales has got some problem to predict because there is an irregular, unexpected thing happen. We call this is irregular variation, for example, the earthquake or uh, September the 11th. This is something that unexpected, but this also influence our sales. When we know our uh, four components of time series, we need to calculate the seasonal index. Seasonal index means the pattern. This pattern repeated every year, like this. So no matter what the real sales amount is, Different years, they followed the same sales patterns. The first quarter, our sales will increase to the second quarter, and the second quarter is the, we have got the highest sales, and then it decreased the third quarter, we have the lowest sales. And this pattern repeats year by year. And if we want to interpret these patterns, we use the percentage numbers, or sometimes decimal numbers like this one. If we want to interpret our winter index, that means in winter our sales will be 23.5 percent lower than the typical quarter or average quarter. And in autumn our sales will be 51.9 percent above the typical quarter or average quarter. But how can we get this seasonal index? There are many steps we need to remember. We first have this data. These are the motorcycle sales in millions of dollars from 2005 to 2010. The first step is we need to reorganize the data vertically. So you organize the table like this. We use different colors to show different years. The second step, you need to calculate the moving average. And you need to put your moving average in the between of the four seasons. So the first moving average comes from winter plus spring plus summer plus four. And you put and divide it by four. And you put a number 8.50 between spring and summer. And you do it cell by cell. So one by one. And all the moving average should be put in the between of four seasons. The third step, after you have get your moving average, you need to get your centered moving average. And the centered moving average comes from the average of every two moving average. And you also put it in between of the two moving average. So you do it one by one and you move it cell by cell downwards. 
And if you remove the middle of your moving average, you only got central moving average. You can find that your central moving average always starts from the third quarter of the first year and ends at the second quarter of the last year. So the first two quarters of 2005 are missing data, and the last two quarters of 2011, uh, 2010 will be missing data. In the fourth step, we need to calculate ratio, which is also called specific seasonal index. We use the real sales divided by the central moving average. And this number is our ratio. We do it one by one. And you can find the same as our central moving average. Our ratio also starts from the third quarter of the first year and ends at the second quarter of the last year. Now we need to pick up all the ratios season by season or quarter by quarter. So all the numbers with smiley, these are our winter ratio. After we pick them up, we need to reorganize the table like this. Fifth step, we need to get the mean of our ratio for different quarters. So 3.834 is the mean from the winter ratio. 2.879 is the mean of the spring ratios. Then the next step, you need to add all these means up, get a total of the means. So the total of the four uh, means for ratios are 4.009. Now you need to calculate your correction factor. Your correction factor comes from 4. And because we only have got 4 seasons, so we always use this constant 4. 4 divided by the total of the 4 means. So 4 divided by 4.009. And you get 0 0.9978. We call this number is your correction factor. After you get your correction factor, you use the mean of different ratios to times the correction factor. 0 0.767 to times 0 0.9978. And you do it one by one. Then you get your adjusted mean. And this adjusted mean is actually your seasonal index. But sometimes our index can also be presented in percentage. So index is just a percentage number of your adjusted mean. After you get your seasonal index, you can interpret that the same as we have done previously. Now let's look at the third part, de-seasonalize data and predict. We have our seasonal index, and we know that our products are very sensitive to the seasons. So within a year, there are a lot of seasonal fluctuations. Now we need to remove the seasonal fluctuations so that we can st study the trend. And we use this equation, y hat equals a plus b times t. t represents time. So the first step, we need to de-seasonalize our data. So for the winter sales, we use our winter index. We use the real sales divided by the winter index. And we get this number, 8.759. And for the spring sales, we divide it by our spring's index. Summer sales divided by the summer index. So we do it one by one for every year, every quarter. We call this procedure is deseasonalization of the data. The deseasonalized data is your y variable. Uh, so this is your dependent variable. And your time is the independent variable. But before we go to the regression analysis, we first need to uh, learn how to code your time because we can have odd numbered years. 
or time. We can also have even numbered. For example, this one. In total, we have got nine years. So this is odd numbered. If it is odd numbered, then the middle point, the middle year, the year in the uh, in the middle, we code it as zero, and then minus one, minus two, plus one and plus two. Mm -hmm. And if it is even numbered, suppose we have ten years, like this, and then we need to use the middle two numbers as minus one and plus one, and then minus three plus three, minus five plus five, etc. So our equation y hat equals a plus b times t is based on the coding of our time. If you code time like this, then you will find to calculate your b, that is much simple. This is the equation you can use to, catch, uh, to calculate your b value, and a value. We still use the previous example to illustrate that. Now we know that our y variable is the deseasonalized variable, and our x variable is the coding of the time. And then we can have x times y for each cell, each line, one by one, and x squared for each x number, one by one, and for both of them, we sum them up. Then we use the equation sigma x times y divided by sigma x squared. So, 206.754 divided by 4,600, and then you can get your B. And your Y bar, this is the mean of your deseasonalized data, is your A. If you get your mean and A, you can formulate your equation. Y hat equals 9.23 plus 0 0.04 times T. This is your prediction equation. Uh, we are going to predict the winter sales in 2007. And if we extend our coding for winter, which is up right after 4 in 2006, and the code should be 25, so your t will be 25. And then you can predict the 10.36 millions of dollars for 2007. But this is based on a trend line, a linear relationship. So 10.36 is actually a quarter average for 2007. But what about your winter sales? You need to be more precise. Then you need to combine the seasonal index into your calculation. We know that in winter, our sales will be 23.5 lower than the average quarter. Suppose our average quarter, the sales predicted is 10.36 million of dollars. Then we use this number to times the winter index. Then that will be 7.92 million of dollars. This is what we say the seasonalized prediction. Because we have the seasonalized prediction, we can make sure that if we predict the winter sales in 2007, we will not predict too much, or we will not predict too few, because we have uh, taken the seasonal index number into account. So our prediction is very reasonable, the seasonalized prediction. So this is our time series courses, a lot of information. I think that you need to come to the class or to the homework session to practice that. And if you have got any questions, please feel free to contact your teacher, Ms. Betsy Matter, Xiao Yan Xu, and Ning Di. That's the course given by International Business School of Hangzhou University of Applied Science.